Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here in our Gospel text for this morning, Jesus gives us a beautiful depiction of what it looks like to live as a saint in this sinful world. Here in this section from Matthew chapter 5, known as the Beatitudes, Christ shows us what it looks like for a man's heart to belong to God instead of the devil. He shows us what those who will gather around the throne of God in heaven are going to look like on earth. And of course, we look nothing like this. But Jesus does. And because Jesus does, because Jesus is the pure saint, because he is the Holy One of God, and because he has clothed us in his holiness, then everything promised in our gospel text this morning is given to us now. And everything promised in our text from Revelation awaits us on the last day. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And you have not been poor in spirit. Though you confess each week that you are a poor, miserable sinner, in your heart you believe that your, that your obedience to God's law made you better than other people, more valuable in his heart. Though you never would have spoken the words of, aloud when you looked at the addicts, the vulgar, the immoral, the sinners who were covered in the muck of their transgressions for all the world to see. You believe that you were better than they were, more precious to God, more valuable to his kingdom. To be a saint, a holy one, God commanded you to fall down on your knees and cry out for his mercy. But in your pride, you stood tall, puffed out your chest, and demanded your wages. You have not been poor in spirit. You have not lived as a saint. But Jesus has. When Jesus saw that your sins had taken your life, he left the kingdom of heaven and all its glory in order to be your Savior. Though Christ was surrounded by the riches of his Father's kingdom, Though he was surrounded by the city of pure gold and the choir of angels, he left this all behind in order to take on human flesh, in order to feel pain, in order to be rejected, hated, spat upon, beaten, crucified, and killed, in order to make you a saint. On the cross, Jesus became utterly poor in spirit, and because of this, you have become rich in spirit. Because his blood has washed away your pride, his poverty of spirit is now the poverty that you needed to have. His holiness is now your holiness. And because of this, now you are a saint of God's kingdom, a kingdom that you will see in all its glory on the last day. Because Christ was poor in spirit, on the day of the resurrection, you will take your palm branch in your hand and cry out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Blessed are those who mourn, Jesus said, for they shall be comforted. And when you saw the world swallowed up in wickedness, when you saw your neighbor being devoured by the devil, you didn't mourn because you didn't care. When you saw hunger, starvation, disease, and death afflicting those who did not affect your life. You would not suffer with them. You wouldn't weep with them. And you certainly weren't willing to mourn the death of your earthly treasures in order to end their mourning. You wouldn't sacrifice your happy life, your money, your trinkets, your stuff in order to show them mercy because they didn't matter to you. But when your neighbor didn't matter to you, you mattered to Christ. And so he did what a saint must do. He mourned the world of sin. Mourned for you when, he had been, uh, when he, you had been torn apart by death and the devil. And in order to end your mourning and your sorrow, Jesus gave up the greatest treasure of all. His very life. Jesus entered into death in order to free you from death. And because of that, because he laid down his life for you, now his perfect mourning is your perfect mourning. Now His perfect compassion is your perfect compassion. And because of this, now you have the promise that you will sing forever in the song of joy that is proclaimed around the throne of God. 
forever proclaiming amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. This is what God requires His saints to be, and you have failed at all of this. When you were called to be meek, to lower yourself for the sake of your neighbor, you were selfish and cruel. When God wanted you to cry out to be fed with Christ's righteousness, you refused to believe that you needed that righteousness, refused to ask for forgiveness, refused to believe that the words of the Bible that condemned your sins were actually addressed to you. When you were called to be merciful, you were hard and unforgiving to those who had sinned against you, continuing to stare daggers at them, destroy their reputations, and burn in anger at them whenever you had the chance. God's saints are meek, hungry for righteousness, and merciful. And you were not. But Christ was. When Christ could have commanded twelve legions of angels to incinerate those who questioned Him, or mocked Him, or put Him to death, He was meek, lowering himself for sinners like you in order that they could be forgiven and glorified by his mercy. When Christ saw that you were starving for the bread of life on account of your cruelty, he let his very flesh be torn apart from the cross and let the blood pour out of his veins so that you could eat and drink of his righteousness forever. When you deserved condemnation, Christ had mercy on you and gave you salvation at the cost of his own life. And by pouring out his saving blood upon you in the waters of your baptism, he made you a saint. He has blessed you to wash your robe and make it white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And when your heart was filled with evil, idolatry, adultery, murder, covetousness, Christ took his pure heart to the cross, a heart that could not be tainted by sin, and he bled that heart dry to take away your sins and to open your eyes to see the face of a Father in heaven who's no longer angry at you, but who now calls you his own beloved child. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And when you made war against your father, when you made war against your neighbor with your sins, Jesus Christ came into this world of war, and he brought peace with his dying words. By covering your sins forever in the flood of his blood, Jesus gave you, the peace, gave you peace with your neighbor, and by erasing your transgressions from the memory of your father with his atoning sacrifice, Jesus gave you peace with God, the God who now calls you His beloved Son. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, Jesus says. And when you turned away from faithfulness to God's word in order to avoid being persecuted, and when you actively persecuted those who were being faithful, Christ did not leave you in your sin. When you would not act like a saint, Jesus came to make you a saint. In his betrayal, his arrest, his trial, when the hands that struck his face, the whips that sliced apart his flesh, the crown of thorns that pressed into his brow, and the nails that pierced his hands and feet, and all of this, Jesus accepted the persecution, embraced the reviling and the utterance of evil against him. And because Jesus endured all of this, His holy life is now yours. The eternal kingdom He earned is now your free gift. Now, because He was willing to endure every drop of persecution for you, now you have the promise that this ugly, brutal, hateful world will not lay a finger on you in the life to come. Now you have the promise that he who sits on the throne will shelter you with his presence, that you will hunger no more, neither thirst any more, that the sun shall not strike you, nor any scorching heat. Now you have the promise that the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be your shepherd, guiding you to springs of living water, and that for all eternity, God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. So because of his faithfulness, 
Because Christ was the Beatitudes for you, you are now a saint in God's kingdom. Because Christ was poor in spirit, because he mourned your sin, because of his meekness, his hunger for righteousness, because of his merciful, pure, perfect heart, because of his willingness to suffer all for you, now the sinful world has no power over you. Now death and the devil lay dead at your feet. Now you have the kingdom of heaven, the comfort of God. Now you have inherited the earth. Now you are filled with Christ's righteousness. Now you have received mercy. Now you are called the Son of God. Now you have the promise that the kingdom of heaven, the city of God, the choir of angels, and the eternal life in the presence of our Lord. Now you have the promise that you will see this in all its glory on the day when the one who made you a saint lifts you up out of the grave and calls you a saint of his kingdom once more. Amen.